Hi, and welcome to another Pick a Card General Reading. Today is going to be a long reading. <laughs> it's very general because I want to get as much information for us as possible. Now that we are a big community, I'm really trying to make sure that the messages are going to resonate. But of course, the bigger we get, the less specific we're able to get. So we're going to be using um, many different methods today. I'm going to be using tarot, oracle cards, my own message cards. Um, we're going to be using some intuitive cards as well, some charms, some initials, and we're going to be bringing in songs as well, because the question we're asking spirit is what is next in love for you? So as usual, I've got three groups. Group one is this carnelian crystal. I haven't seen this crystal in months. I just moved house recently and it was under my bed this whole time. So interesting. I've just been <laughs> drawing on that energy while I slept, but beautiful color. Love it. Group two, you are this amethyst crystal. Another very interesting crystal, to be honest. I don't know how it got this to be that shape, but it's a very um, different energy. I only bring it out every now and then. I love amethyst, though. Love amethyst. In group three, you are this opalite crystal. Some people call this moonstone. You'll hear me call it moonstone sometimes as well, out of out of habit. But it is um, opalite. So, when you're ready, when you have a feeling, or when your intuition is guiding you to choose. Check the description box below for your timestamps and join me in your reading. Hi group one and welcome if you chose this carnelian crystal. That doesn't sound right for some reason. I may be saying it wrong. I'm not sure. But it's a beautiful crystal, very bright color. And this is your reading. So today we're asking spirit, what is next in love for you? I'm going to be using a lot of different tricks so to say um, to try to get as much information for you as possible I have a feeling that a lot of people will choose to watch this video so hopefully we'll get some messages that can resonate for each and every one of you um, above all though we're here for clarity honesty and guidance so spirit what is next in love for group one please we'll start with the tarot what is next in love for group one oops <laughs> So your first card is the Eight of Cups upright. We also have Temperance upright and the Magician as well. Um, Seven of Swords reversed, cutting through the lies. Very powerful energy, Group 1. Some of you may have recently left a relationship or chosen to walk away from a situation. We have the Five of Pentacles reversed. Um, it's almost like you're... You want more. You're not happy with your current situation. You want more. You feel as though you have more to give and someone wasn't either getting, someone wasn't either um, offering you what you wanted or you just feel like you're not where you could be. Um, you're choosing to walk away towards something more, something better. But it's taking a lot of self-control for some reason. It's taking this energy of um, you're having to be very careful like I feel like you may have had a period where you've gone the other way group one where instead of being open to love you completely cut it off because it was either too painful or too risky or you just didn't want to invest your emotions into somebody else right now or it felt like it wasn't going anywhere you weren't getting the results you expected, but it feels like you're leveling up now with that magician card especially. Look at this beautiful imagery. Beautiful imagery. You're really leveling up, group one. Getting stronger, more powerful, coming into your power, recognizing what you deserve and what you had before wasn't enough. Whether you're in a relationship or not, it could have been a situationship, it just wasn't enough. So can I get another card, please, to clarify the Seven of Swords reversed? We have two. So the first one is the Knight of Swords reversed. Very interesting. And the other one is the Nine of Wands reversed. Wow. Okay. So bottom deck energy for you, group one. Every time this card comes out in a general reading, it makes me laugh, is the Hermit. Um, not a bad energy. Um, I am just going to say that obviously I got songs for you as well. That was something that I organized before. You clicked on this reading so I know kind of where the energy seems to be going 
And honestly, it feels like group one with the cards here as well, you are just coming into your power and you have not necessarily choice, but the freedom of choice. Uh, you can literally just do what you want. And for most of you, it feels like you don't want to be in a relationship right now. In terms of what is next in love, you're still trying to figure out what the hell that means for you. Um, the Hermit card as a bottom deck energy is kind of being introspective, choosing to withdraw in order to gain answers from within. So maybe you don't entirely know what you want. Maybe you don't know if you even want to share your life with someone right now. Or maybe it feels like you just want to kind of step back from, from love um, in order to figure out how to move forward in the best way. Because it feels like there is someone lingering around you who kind of you withdrew your energy from or your emotions from because it just wasn't giving you what you wanted and it could be that you know with this empress card reversed you're just having to shelter whatever positive loving nurturing energy you have for yourself right now you don't feel like you have anything to give to anybody else right now um, it could be that you just weren't getting the results you expected, so you chose to withdraw. But this first card here with the, the Eight of Cups being clarified by the Five of Pentacles reversed, it's like you're, you're choosing to walk away from something that wasn't helping you advance. It's like you got stuck in this Five of Pentacles energy. And the Five of Pentacles usually um, depicts two people, one's walking ahead of the other with their head down, and the one behind that person is sort of looking up um, at the window and they almost seem to be wanting more. And so it could have been that you were that person who was towing behind this other person, feeling left out and wanting more. Or you could have been the other person, you know, eyes ahead, um, just wanting to get out of that situation, basically. Um, but it just feels like you got stuck in this feeling of almost wanting more. And it's like you were expecting things to balance or you were expecting things to come good. Um, maybe you were expecting somebody else to reach out to you and it never happened. So with this Eight of Cups, this misfortune energy, you feeling stuck, you got to a point where you were like, well, I'm not going to stay here if that's all that they can give me or if nothing's going to change. I know I deserve more. I can't stay in this situation. So it does feel like um, you walked away from something here. And it wasn't that you gave up on that situation because the Eight of Cups is a card that depicts eight cups upright, still full of emotion, but just um, not that person isn't there to tend to those cups anymore. So it feels like you walked away from those eight cups in order to find your two of cups. That's usually what happens is you leave that situation to find your happiness elsewhere. And that doesn't mean that you're giving up, but it just feels like you just weren't getting anywhere and it was time to move forward. Um, this was actually a divinely guided situation. It wasn't the right time for that situation to occur. I, it doesn't, it's not that your expectations were illusioned. It's just that you actually do deserve more. And with temperance here in the upright position, the universe is indicating that now is the time to really... Um, feed that energy into yourself and to become selfish, not in a bad way, but this card for me represents self-control, being mindful of your energy, um, how much energy you're giving out versus how much energy you're giving back. And just knowing um, above all that, you know, what you put out into the universe is what you get back. And if you were feeling so frustrated by this situation that the only energy you were able to express was um, negative energy or frustrated energy or impatient energy and things that aren't necessarily um, positive, still a part of us, but, you know, you put that energy out day in and day out, you're going to get that energy back. So the universe made this situation happen in order for you to become more tempered, to become more balanced and to feel uh, more in control of your situation as well in order to ground yourself and start manifesting um, positive results 
because this card also feels like the law of attraction card. You know, what you put out is what you get back. And it's being clarified by the Queen of Cups reversed. So very distorted emotional thinking. Um, it's very uncontrolled thinking as well. So sometimes you, you might have just had some very overwhelming moments where you weren't really sure where that energy came from or <laughs> how long it was going to last. But this, I'm, I'm laughing about it, but... Um, this is some heavy energy. So you've been through it, group one, and it feels like what is next in love is you are almost deciding, well, do I want to go through that again? Is that something that I'm willing to risk? Um, and if this Queen of Cups stays reversed, then I would say no, group one, you probably don't want to. You really need to use this time to figure out what you want and to remember what you deserve. And it's up to you. It really is. It feels like you're coming into your power, though. Um, this next card we have is the Magician card upright. I did show you this before. Um, it just kind of amplifies that energy of coming into your power. This is such a beautiful imagery, um, beautiful illustration. Um, it literally is just about using i'm sorry but the magician is like cheap tricks as well so for some of you group one you may decide you want to go out more you may decide you want to show off on social media um <laughs> the magician isn't someone who is reserved at all they're very very boasty about their power they're someone who really expresses just how powerful they are they want everyone to know just how powerful they are so i do feel um like you're going to hit that point where, you know, it you may be really posting a lot of thirst trap pictures on social media or not necessarily, but um, you're coming into your power in a good way because this was, this situation was meant to remind you what you truly deserve. Now, this card, interestingly, is being clarified by the Hierophant. So it feels like I'm hearing commitment here, but it's weird because Honestly, I'm only picking up on your energy here, group one. I'm not feeling another person. Like, I can feel someone lingering in the background, um, but it feels like you that's the person that you choose to distance yourself from because you weren't getting the results you need. So it's like you're kind of like out there testing the waters with this magician card, looking for... Um, interested suitors, so to speak, like just trying to remind yourself how attractive you are and that you can attract people if you want to, but it's like you, it's not good enough still. Like these, these people who are interested in you aren't good enough yet. With this Hierophant card, you may be using dating apps or you may be going out more to meet people. This card can also indicate seeking advice from wiser or more learned people. So it could be that you start hanging around a different crowd who uh, have a lot of dating experience. Um, it just feels like you are gaining more experience and in turn, you're understanding more about yourself as well. You could be choosing to date you could not be maybe you're just putting yourself out there in situations that leave you open to meeting new people um, but it does feel like you're getting out more or you're you have the ability to show just how attractive and powerful you are with this magician card and this hierophant card is almost you um, upskilling and gaining more wisdom from others like you're gaining you're learning new things or you're gaining more knowledge about dating, which in turn helps you understand what you want as well. Um, it feels like you want commitment, group one, I'm not going to lie, like for that Hierophant card to be there, and that was the first word I heard was commitment. Um, it feels like you want it, but I just don't, like, I think you don't know who or where you're going to get it from. That's the problem. Um, and honestly, the next card we have is the Seven of Swords reverse. So this could indicate that somebody is going to be coming back to um, to check themselves, to say, you know, in the past I wasn't acting genuine, I wasn't being authentic. Um, it could mean that they need to correct some of their previous behavior, or it could mean that you are choosing to just move forward in love without this, and you've made that very clear to the universe. You are deciding that, you know, you don't want to participate in behaviors that um, could instigate bad karma, so to speak. The Seven of Swords is usually a card that represents dishonesty or this feeling of sneaking around. So maybe after this magician moment and hanging around those people who have experienced dating, 
um, you decide that you don't want to do that and those experiences are fun and all but your happiness isn't there. Um, this is a very logical decision for you though. It feels like it's it's more out of integrity and it's more out of um, your value system instead of your emotional thinking and your physical thinking. Um, it's, it's just about who you are as a person and you kind of tell yourself that I'm not like that. I couldn't do that. Um, and that is kind of like another way that you are coming into your power because you are also recognizing that good things take time. With this Knight of Swords reversed, you kind of don't want to rush into anything. You don't want to make an impulsive decision that could leave you scarred. Um, the other card that came out with this Knight of Swords is the Nine of Wands reversed. And this is a card that talks about um, lowering your defenses and allowing people in. Um, sort of pulling back your boundaries and letting go of fears. So it's a pretty healthy balance. It's this decision where you're deciding that you want to be true to yourself and you want, you, you by establishing that, you're also allowing people an opportunity to get close to you. Um, but you're saying that you don't want to rush into things. You don't want to um, move in a way that is going to compromise your integrity. It's almost like you have the, a choice here to have like a one night stand with someone and you choose not to because you know that for you personally, it's not something that you would do. And it's, it's not like a, a matter of um, right or wrong. It's just like a really logical decision for you. Like, no, I couldn't do that. Um, I couldn't, I'm not that kind of person. And in turn, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of surprising, like, to be honest, because up until that moment, you walked away from this situation and you put yourself in this position where it would be very easy for you to, to do that, to have that opportunity, that one night stand opportunity. And then this happens and you go, actually, no, I don't want to do that. I couldn't do that. And it's surprising for you. It's a big learning moment because you're like, wow, okay, which is probably why the hermit is here because you're realizing things about yourself that you didn't before until this situation came about. So it's interesting, group one. I'm honestly, I'm not feeling like a specific person here, but it does feel like you're going to be in a position where you get to learn more about yourself by putting yourself out there more. Some of you may choose to start dating. Um, others of you, it's a matter of figuring out what you want here. Um, so I'm going to get some other cards for you. I just wonder if I should get charms first. Charms can usually take a long time and we're at 15 minutes already. So can I get some charms for group one, please, spirit? What is next in love for group one? Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's where I'm calling it. So there's definitely messages for you in the Oracle deck, so I'll make sure I get those. Um, this is the messages charm. So there's a, logic, a lot of logical thinking here. There's also a lot of communication. Um, we have this twice. So it's back, back and forth communication. Um, it goes both ways. So it may be with the person you're walking away from, or it could be that you are using dating apps and communicating with a lot of people, or maybe you're communicating with people who... Um, it just feels like in terms of love, you might be getting a lot of advice from other people as well with that Hierophant card. There's a lot of communication about your love life going on. There are some distorted toxic energies, but listen, this is a this is an experience that um, you, it's not a bad thing when the snake charm comes out. It, it could just be that there's like a lot of lustful energies around you. Um, you could be wanting stepping into that energy with the magician there. Um, it's not a bad thing. It's just kind of confirming that there's there's going to be a lot of experimentation. I do feel like there will be alcohol involved. This landed on top of that temperance. And with the typical temperance card pouring two glasses into each other, you could be going out more if you have the ability to do so where you live. Um, it feels like you're definitely putting yourself out there and you're putting yourself into some not vulnerable situations, but situations where your inhibitions are lowered, if that makes sense, whether it, substances are involved or not. It just feels like you're in a very carefree energy. You are keeping your heart out of this. Honestly, the two cups cards we got were reversed. So you're keeping your walls up until that moment at the end there with the Knight of Swords where you make that decision not to rush in. You're really staying guarded and you're keeping your emotions 
secretive. You're making a lot of logical decisions and the universe is guiding you through these situations. Um, but it feels like your heart space is, is locked away. It's almost like somebody very specific has your heart though, group one. There is someone in your life who seems to be emotionally tethered to you. Um, and this is someone who you did feel there was a toxic energy around. Um, and I use toxic lightly here. I know it's a heavy word. I don't mean that they're a bad person or that their behavior was bad. It's up to you to make that decision. But it's just that what they were giving wasn't what you wanted or you weren't getting what you wanted. It really feels like your expectations weren't fulfilled. And somebody here made the selfish decision in a, in a good way. Again, I use that word lightly. Selfish isn't a bad word when used in the right context. Somebody made a um, selfish decision to, to step out of the situation. Um, and it felt really balanced, if I'm honest. It felt like the right decision to make in order to gain further insight and wisdom. Now, the Queen of Cups reverse down here is also being clarified by the heavy commitment charm. So perhaps some of you will have the the um, opportunity to figure out exactly what you want. I think that in your heart of hearts, you know that you want a commitment, but you just don't know how to get it or how what that looks like for you because everyone's ideas of a committed relationship can differ as well. It's not always nuclear. <laughs> it's not always, um, what's the word? Well, it's not going to be the same as your friends and it's, it's probably not going to be the same as the people you're around at the moment, which is probably why you're getting so much communication about your love life and experimenting and, and what is out there. We have the sweetness charm as well. So very interesting. There's somebody who either you're very sweet on or who's very sweet on you. Um, it, that actually landed, if I'm honest, that landed on the Queen of Cups though. And right next to it was the Alice in Wonderland charm reverse. So it's almost like that dream didn't come true, but the sweetness of it is still lingering in the back of your mouth. Um, usually this is something that you would fantasize about a lot with this Alice in Wonderland charm, but it's like that wasn't able to manifest into reality or the, the expectation wasn't fulfilled. And so it, you had to find that sort of fulfillment elsewhere. This is somebody who you're very bound to though with this chain and that actually landed on the temperance card. So it feels like um, they really tested your self-control and that's what you're learning. That's what the universe was trying to bring you towards is knowing um, that the main, the key word in self-control isn't control, it's self. That is the key word, self. And this is a moment to know more about yourself. Um, over here with the magician, there is, it is landed on um, the woman side. The coin charm landed on the woman side rather than the money side so you're very invested in in people when you're in that magician energy you're very much aware of your power and you're watching other people and it just feels like there's a lot of people that come into your life in that moment um it feels like you are going to be in like a big group setting or you're just going to have interactions with a lot of people and you're going to have the opportunity to explore your value. This isn't um, monetary value. This isn't the kind of value that can be earned through working. <laughs> it's the kind of value that you possess within and understanding what you're worth as well. Um, we also have at the bottom here, the Hierophant card was usually the offer charm, but it was face down in this instance. So it's almost like you're out there seeking advice, but you're not being offered what you truly need, if that makes sense. Like you're getting a lot of wisdom, but at the end of the day, it's more confirmation that the true answers lie within with that hermit card, the true answers to your specific situation. Nobody knows your specific situation as well as you do. You are the expert in your life. So I'm going to get some cards as well from the Destiny deck. What is um, next in love for group one spirit? Oops. What is next in love for group one, spirit? What is next in love for group one? Oops. <laughs> yeah, wow. Big yes. Look what you just got, group one. Freedom. Freedom. Yeah, definitely. Your energy is so strong here. And while you have the opportunity to get connected with other people, this focus right now is really on you and gaining those answers for yourself. Fulfillment. You're out there seeking your two of cups moment to get your ten of cups. Where can I get my expectations fulfilled? What do I want? Yeah, you're taking initiative here. So this is a very 
um, selfish in a good way, group one. We shouldn't be so negatively geared towards that word. Selfish can be a very positive word. It's about taking that power back in your life, in your love life, taking that initiative. This person, you weren't getting what you wanted before, so you went out there to get it. We have adventure and boldness. Yeah, you're really coming into your power. And there's going to be a lot of um, new adventures is what I'm feeling. Like you're going to have the opportunity to create new memories. Some of them you may want to forget because <laughs> um, and not in a bad way, but it's just it's it's exciting times, honestly, group one. And as always, no judgment. I'm just the messenger here. So we have acceptance as well. Um, there's going to be some really harsh truths you're going to learn about yourself. I'm not going to lie. With that magician energy and the hierophant energy, you may be gearing up with or teaming up with someone who really <laughs> challenges your value system. And they're very fun to be around. They have a lot of wisdom, but it not everything that they do is in alignment with your values. And eventually you do put your foot down and go, actually, no, I'm not that kind of person. So there's a lot that you are learning about yourself and you're really having to um, explore some very harsh truths about yourself as well. Some things that you didn't realize before. We have simplicity at the bottom. You kind of seem to want to get to the core of this. It's like getting to the base of, yes, you want a committed relationship, but what does that mean for you? Understanding that simple truth. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Oh, I forgot. We also have another charm over here. And there's messages in this deck too, so I'm going to get them for you. Um, it's the precious charm. The precious charm. So this is seen both ways. Um, first of all, you are a very precious, unique individual. You do deserve love. And stepping away from something that wasn't serving you was the right decision to make. Now is a you're in a situation that is being divinely guided. You have angels that are watching out for you, protecting you. Um, this is a very challenging moment. So I feel like Archangel Michael is really guiding you through this. It feels like a real um, base or a root chakra moment where you're being able to connect with your core self and rebuild as you seem fit. But you're also going to come into contact or realize um, that certain people in your life are extremely precious to you and you don't want to live without them as well. So I'm going to use the deck of characters as well just to get some other intuitive messages. So what is next for group one in love spirit? We have, oh my goodness, we have jail cell. <laughs> oh my gosh, please look after yourself. I was feeling like you're going to undertake some risky behaviors with this person that you're teaming up with. So <laughs> it may mean that <laughs> you just need to really look after yourself, okay? When your inhibitions are lowered, you could find yourself in some really compromising situations. So look after yourself. There is going to be a moment that challenges you um, and really grounds you in the kind of person that you are and you're going to realize some really um, harsh truths about yourself as well but that jail cell is also a liber liberating moment I really strongly feel this tied with that freedom you know it's breaking outside of the box and exploring the truth as you see it what does this mean for you what does love mean to you what does commitment mean to you what do you deserve is it out there yes it is or how do I find it that sort of stuff very introspective moments um, and also coming to peace with what you walked away from as well. So what else is next in love for group one spirit? Oh, okay. We have wrestling ring. So it does feel like you're taking that bold initiative. You know, you're being assertive. You're putting yourself out there. Um, you could get hurt, but you don't care. You're just so determined to win. Um, <laughs> This wrestling ring it also indicates that you could be butting heads with one like opponent in particular. Like I'm just drawn to the fact that usually this isn't typical. I don't go to that many wrestling matches if I'm honest, but it's sort of like a one-on-one -on -one situation. So you're kind of out there boxing, but just it feels like this is almost like a getting even situation. So the universe is also reminding you with that card that um, when you attempt to get even, you're only really getting even with yourself. Um, just being mindful of karma and creating more karma for yourself to clear as well. We have the Grim Reaper here. So there's definitely been an ending of some sorts. Um, I don't see this as a bad card. It's just confirmation that you are walking away from something and you want something to end in order for a new beginning. Um, something was definitely not serving you anymore. Um, what else? I just saw Broken Heart, but I also am seeing Mirror. 
um, and the universe, which is interesting. I'll only take those two cards. There's so many more here, um, but I think I'll just leave it at that. We also have airplanes, so some of you guys could be traveling. I didn't see anything in the cards that indicated traveling. Oh, that eight of cups, I suppose. Um, the universe here, it's kind of like a when you walk away from this situation, at first, it makes you feel very small. At first, you kind of have a moment where all of a sudden you're a little drop in a vast, vast ocean. And you have this freedom now that almost feels too big. Um, and it's very easy for you to feel like you don't matter or to feel insignificant. And it's kind of what triggers you to step into this energy of wanting to gain more control. And you do that by becoming overly boasty with that magician card but just know that it, it's happening as it is intended but you aren't insignificant you do matter every single atom in this universe matters and was created for a reason it's literally matter um but it, this retrospective situation leads you towards this introspective moment where you are able to examine yourself and get those answers you're seeking from within. And that's truly only confirmed with this mirror situation, you know. This is a moment um, to really examine yourself. You, you start to... You start this journey by wanting more control, but really with that temperance card, the focus is on yourself. And it is a time to to feel like you can um, show yourself off as well because you're, you're realizing what you're worth again. You're realizing and understanding how in, incredible you are and how um, you're feeling. You're gassing yourself up <laughs> to understand what you deserve. So Spirit, can I get messages from the person that Group 1 is walking away from, please? Can I get messages from the person that Group 1 is walking away from? Please give me time. I've never felt this way before. This is the nine of, um, you know what's really interesting? This actually felt like the nine of cups, but reversed. This is normally my nine of swords, but this is somebody who did feel like they drained you. They drained you. And it wasn't, it's just because they didn't, they didn't fulfill you in the way that you were expecting them to. The Nine of Cups reversed. Please give me time. I've never felt this way before. What else? Messages from the person Group 1 stepped away from, please. Or Group 1 will be stepping away from. I'm addicted to you. Yeah, it's a very tethered feeling with that chain. It's really feeling bound, feeling really connected in a way that you felt disempowered. Um, it felt like you couldn't do anything. It felt like a jail cell. And at times it was very um, lustful and at times you could almost trick yourself into thinking that it was everything that you wanted, but it also left you feeling so bound and tethered and it like an addiction. It's like you go through a withdrawal period as well when you leave this person and then it's this intense craving of needing more of them, but not fully getting what you're craving. Oh, very... Very strong energy. Um, messages from group one's person, please. The person that they've stepped away from. We have weight, seven. And this is literally just seven in general. Obstacles, challenges, overcoming adversity. Um, it just feels like there's a test of time here as well. This person is really asking for a lot of time. I don't know what they're doing, um, but <laughs> They're really asking for a lot of time. Messages from group one's person. What would they say to group one? The person that they've walked away from. Group one's person, please. Messages. I'm going to get one more because I want to get advice and initials. You are so beautiful. Why do you need me? The nine of pentacles. This person struggled with self-worth issues. And I feel like that rubbed off on you too, group one. It was frustrating, but it also became... Um, it was also like you ended up feeding so much energy into their self-worth that you kind of lost your own self-worth over time as well. Um, I don't doubt that at some stage this person really made you feel special because they do feel so connected to you, but it really feels like you just weren't getting what you wanted and what you expected from them. At the bottom deck, we have no, no. So I don't know if, it, yeah, <laughs> that kind of just speaks for itself. I'm going to get some initials and gratitude papers for you as well. Okay. 
Okay, interesting. Not a lot of initials. We have X, so they could have X in their name, or they could literally be your X. Um, we also have Z. Oh, excuse me, hiccups. We have Z here. Interesting initials, group one. We have R. R. It almost feels like their nickname could have had an R in it. We have N. Um, we also have G. And then we have our um, other little messages as well from the universe. So we have December. I am grateful for my hard work. So this person with that devil energy on the I'm addicted to, they could have Capricorn energy. They could be a very slow moving person, a very slow to commit person. Um, they could be someone who distracts themselves with work or with other things. Capricorn people, I am one, we tend to become very obsessive as well. So this could be someone that you felt very obsessed with and it, it felt like you couldn't clock that level, like you couldn't elevate. You were just stuck in that obsessive energy and that would hurt, that would hurt. So this is um, indicative of a choice that is being contemplated because the um, challenge to overcome is that by moving forward, you could hurt someone else or you could hurt something else. It just feels like this never progressed because that would hurt dot, 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 someone else or that could have hurt them, issues with vulnerability or hurt, hurting others. And the other message is, it is always on my mind. This is a sexual kind of message, if I'm honest. It's like someone who is very much invested in the physical um, connection. Um, it's also, I mean, it could just you could fit it to your own context. It's just like, this is a situation that was really overthought, like a lot of thinking, not a lot of action, if I'm honest. A lot of um, things indicated that, you know, there was a lot of thinking, but yeah, just not a lot of forward movement. Um, so that could be significant to the person that you're stepping away from. It feels like with all these random letters, um, you are going to be in a more experimental energy. You're kind of stepping into your own. So I really need to wrap this up because we're really going over time. Um, I just want to get, sorry, I just want to get um, advice from Spirit for you, Group 1. Advice from Spirit. What should Group 1 do? Look at what we got. The Hierophant card, teach. So this is a teachable moment. I'm sorry. I know it's hard. It's really tricky and you're very strong for getting through this. But it is a teachable moment with this Hierophant card. Now is the time to seek advice, to gain wisdom, and to also share your experience with those who you feel um, safe to do so with. This is really a situation where you're able to um, free yourself and gain more wisdom from your surroundings and from other people. So don't hesitate to. It's not a bad thing to put yourself out there. Now is really a time to get um, connected with the broader community. And I'm not giving, it feels like I'm giving you permission to like, basically, this is the universe giving you permission to um, get out there. You know what I'm saying? Like really just put yourself out there, learn some things about yourself. That's what's going to happen. We also have choose your battles. So be weary of where you're investing your energy. You're really good at asserting yourself. And that was the correct decision to make. Um, if this is really about overcoming your fears, if I'm honest, and knowing what you deserve, fighting for what you deserve, fighting for what you truly, um, yeah, I mean, literally what you deserve. Choose your battles, standing up for yourself. And we have heart chakra. So don't forget you do have a heart and your heart deserves love, okay? Your heart was missing in the tarot, if I'm honest. There was no hearts there. So this is it. It's here. And the universe is reminding you that you do have one, okay? And it's okay to go out there and learn some things and figure out what in you deserve and what to fight for. Um, but you are a beautiful soul and you will find love. You just need to find it from within as well and remind yourself how incredible you are and how much love you have to give as well. So bottom deck energy is joy and stability. So you are disrupting your joy and stability in order to find this. Um, you weren't, you're not there at the moment, but you will be, okay? You will get there. With this Four of Wands energy, this is what you're fighting for, and this is what the universe is fighting for with you. You deserve happiness. You deserve stability. You deserve celebration. You deserve even an equal give and take, a reciprocated, requited love, someone who can offer you stability and protection and growth as well. 
So group one, I'm going to put your songs in the description box below. You had two songs. The first one was really bizarre, honestly. At first I was like, wow, I'm going to have to get two songs because I don't believe in coincidences. So I put the first one there as well. Um, but it kind of makes sense now. I'm not going to lie. It kind of fits with the energy. So there could be messages in those songs for you. I'm going to wrap it up here. Super long reading. I hope you enjoyed it though. I hope there was something in there that offered you more information in order for you to make an informed decision on your life stay safe wherever you are and i'll connect with you in another video bye hi group two and welcome if you chose this amethyst crystal then this is your reading i was about to say cluster because i'm so used to using my amethyst cluster all right so today we are asking spirit what is next in love for you this is going to be a lengthy reading a warning group one's reading was quite long um you can always adjust the speed in the settings below i think it'll be on this side um that's what i do because i'm such an impatient person but i plan on getting a lot of messages for you so we're going to start with the tarot today I'm using the Anne Stokes um, Gothic Tarot. Is that what it's called? Gothic Tarot? I think so. All decks are in the description box below anyway, the decks that I'm using. So what is next in love for group two, please, Spirit? Holy heck, that's one way to fall out. We have the Death card. There was another card there too, the Ace of Cups. Interesting. Okay, there wasn't a mistake. I've got to take that card out, apparently. The Ace of Cups here with the Death card. So a lot of water energy. Wow, group two. This is a surprise because um, very different already to what I was... I mean, that's the truth of it, though. Hey, it's about getting honesty and clarity, not expectations. <laughs> Death and the Ace of Cups. Beautiful energy, actually. Group two spirit, what is coming for group two? What is next in love for group two, please? Oh, I just saw the devil and the moon. So much water energy. <gasps> sorry. Oh, sorry. I just got too excited. Um, there's so much water energy here. We have the moon, which is a beautiful unicorn in this deck. Um, that can also represent illusions and feeling as though you don't know the full truth of something because it's followed by the Six of Cups as well. Um, ooh, interesting. Can I clarify the Death card? That's all water energy. We have Scorpio, the Ace of Cups, and then um, Pisces or Cancer as well with the moon, depending on which you read it, and then the Six of Cups. So a lot of water energy. Is this for the Death? Apparently, there's another card Spirit wants to show, though. To clarify, the death card is the Nine of Wands. So we have the Tower card and the Nine of Wands clarifying our death card. What about the Ace of Cups, Spirit? We have the Fool reversed. Interesting. And the Moon? Why is the Moon in this reading? What is next in love? The Wheel of Fortune reversed. Oh, now I understand that song. Your songs are in the description box below, group two. I got you two songs because, again, that, that sneaky group one kind of messed with the algorithm a little bit. So I got everyone two songs just in case. There could be additional messages in those lyrics or if you want to listen to those songs, you can. But, yeah, wow. I'm kind of getting a narrative now and I can kind of understand what happened as well as why we're in this energy. Why is the Six of Cups here though, Spirit? We have the Ten of Pentacles. Okay. Bottom deck energy for you is the Hierophant reversed, group two. The Hierophant reversed. Wow. Oh my gosh. And I'm just looking at the way that this person is like fostering that dragon, like really sheltering that dragon holding it so close to them like you can see the tail is wrapped around this lady's waist and those wings are just like very protective energy very possessive energy um and it's reversed so it's feeling vulnerable it's feeling unprotected it's feeling um unfulfilled if i'm honest like it's almost like you're craving that connection but the connection isn't there and then we have the ace of swords reverse so a hidden truth perhaps um you know what i just heard suffering in silence is that your energy or your person's though spirit their energy or your person's spirit saying it could be both of you so there is someone in your life group two and it's like there's a powerful ending happening here because there needs to be change Death is here to cleanly sweep up something that wasn't meant to to grow. It was almost like um, 
someone is being stubborn here. I'm not going to lie. It just feels like, <laughs> you know what I just keep, I keep feeling and seeing is like this lump of charcoal and death is trying to say like, there's no life in that. Why are you doing this? There's nothing there that is serving you. It is time to let go. And it's like that this person is so invested in this lump of charcoal and death is trying to really help this person <laughs> realize that like nothing is going to come of that charcoal. It might help to purify the air, but it's not going to lead to anything. And it's like, until death was there, this person didn't realize that. And it was like, Oh really? And then death said, yes, this is a lump of charcoal. It's not going to grow anything. It's, it's literally the most basic form of, of death. It's carbon. And this person goes, oh, okay, well, well, what do I do now? And that moment offered so much change. That moment offered a lot of fear as well because it was like a wow moment. So somebody could have been, um, there's like a powerful ending here. And honestly, the narrative feels like somebody is leaving a relationship. Um, and it was a very sudden, unexpected change that caused fear with this nine of wands. But it also... Um, it was a little bit like a kick in the guts is what I'm feeling because this person had been so invested in that situation with this nine of wands. They put so much energy, so much effort into building this only to realize that it wasn't what they wanted and it wasn't meant to be. Um, so this tower moment offered very sudden, unexpected but deserved change because it wasn't real it wasn't the truth and the truth is that this ace of cups is is something that um, they wanted and I don't know if this is you this could be your person but with this ace of cups showing up in your reading group too you do have an opportunity here for a, um, a beginning in love and I don't want to use the word new I'm going to be very careful here because this is an opportunity to express emotion to someone. It's really an opportunity to um, allow someone the insight into how you feel about them. And it really feels like there's hesitation here to do that. Again, aces aren't promises. They're wonderful when they appear in a reading because they are opportunities for a, a beginning of some sorts, but they're not always promised. And it feels like it, what's involved in this new beginning is, um, or this beginning, I should say, because for some of you it isn't new, um, is a full moment, is this moment of, of taking a risk, taking a leap of faith towards something or someone, a situation that could leave you feeling very foolish if you're wrong. And it's almost like logic overrides the temptation to take this risk. Um, this opportunity is still there. It's being given to you. It's upright. You know, it's the opportunity to express emotion. And honestly, group two, the fact that it's upright, your emotion is requited. It flows both ways. It's not something that is going to leave you feeling foolish, but it's like logic here is telling you not to do that. Um, and it could be because you don't think that they're going to reciprocate, you know, you you're telling yourself that well they could feel the same way but how are they going to say the same thing as me um I just keep feeling drawn to the lyrics in that first song of yours group two and it kind of really makes sense now because someone around you and it, it's rubbing off on you too group two for this card to show up in your reading there's someone who isn't being honest about their feelings here with the moon card and I was really hoping that we were going to get, you know, a, <laughs> an energy of what your next relationship is going to be like or something like that. But this is a reading asking what is next in love for you. And this moon card is, is telling me that someone isn't being truthful here about their emotions. And this is a very emotional situation, though. There's so much emotion invested here in both things. I feel like most of you who picked group two have someone in your life who you could think of, um, who does hold emotions towards you. They haven't expressed them to you, though. They haven't, um, I don't want to say it, but it, it's, this is what they're saying. They haven't had the opportunity to express those moments. But what my head is telling me, and I don't usually like to involve my head in intuitive readings, but logic is telling me that this person had opportunities to, but they just didn't take those opportunities 
So this person is saying they'd never had the opportunity to tell you the truth. They didn't tell you how they felt and that everything, the truth was kind of just resting below the surface and it wasn't exactly the same as the way that they were portraying, you know. what They're saying that what you see is not the truth. What happened before was not the truth. There's so much more I need to tell you. Because if you look at this, like this is a very poised, proper, spectacular, if I'm honest, a very spectacular looking unicorn. But the the image below in the water is completely distorted. The eyes look like gaping holes. You know, there's a lot that they haven't revealed to you. There's a lot of pieces missing in the puzzle. And they feel like it's because the timing just wasn't right here. Um, they feel as though they, they took the short straw in divine timing and they've had this hiatus of learnings. <laughs> the universe is really testing them with a karmic situation right now. That could be very applicable for some of you. Um, but it just feels like they've had to learn some things first and they weren't able to have this open expression towards you. Now, I will just say, though, for the moon to be upright, this situation is going to improve. The moon can also indicate um, like a, a moment of expression, um, a moment where you are able to unmask some of these secrets and you're able to delve into some of these deep emotions and get into these, I don't want to, it's not that they're secrets, it's just that they're secret because the moment or the opportunity to express them wasn't there according to your person. They didn't intend on being deceitful, they just never had the opportunity to tell you the full truth is what I'm hearing. And it's like all these assumptions have been made now instead and they're really concerned about how you view them. Um, they want you to see them as this strong, 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 spectacular unicorn, but they're really concerned that you're going to see them as something else unless they tell you the truth. And in turn, they're kind of nervous to tell you the truth as well, because they think that that is going to make you see them in a distorted view. This person just overthinks a lot, but their heart is very invested right now. Anyway, we also have the Six of Cups here. So group two, this is someone who is definitely from your past. I'm so sorry. If you were coming here for something new, this is what is the universe has chosen to present to you right, right now in this moment. Um, the Six of Cups indicates a very like, oh, I don't know why I'm hearing that. A very deep longing, apparently. A very deep longing for you, group two. Um, this is someone who wants to give you something. I'm not going to lie. They feel like they've abandoned you is what I'm feeling. They're really concerned about their choices and their decisions in the past and how that's made you feel. They almost need to apologize to you is what I heard. Um, they're even more sorry because they're saying that they don't know how to come back to you as well. This is so specific group two. So I apologize if this is taking a tangent that doesn't make any sense. Um, Goodness me, wild energy. All right, so with the Six of Cups, though, if I'm just focusing on the basic brass tacks here, what the Six of Cups card can mean is that there is a soul connection here. So whatever distance you may be experiencing, whatever separation you may be experiencing, whatever lack of constant communication you may be experiencing, this is someone who feels very connected with you. They feel like they've known you from a past life. They feel like their soul has had a moment of recognition and that you are someone who um, belongs to them. And I don't mean that in a possessive way. It's just that this is someone who, who really feels like they belong with you and that the two of you belong together. Like you were meant to find each other and you were meant to come together. And it's not like, it's not something that they can control anymore. It's it's really something that they they um, they want as well. But they are concerned because they don't know how to make this happen now. With this Ten of Pentacles, they really feel like their future is invested in you and that you're their goal. You're something, I know I say this in my readings, but you're end game for them. You're the, the person they want to wake up to every day. You're the person they want to have a family with. You're the person they want to have a home with. Um, you're the person they want to settle down with, whatever that means for you, group two. They're very invested in you and they really, really want to tell you everything is what I'm feeling, like everything with that moon card. They want to get rid of all the illusions. Um, they are still afraid. I'm not going to lie. There is fear here with between the death and the nine of wands and the full reverse with the moon. There is a lot of fear. There's concern over how you will view them and whether you will accept the truth 
and and their narrative as they perceive it because they know that this situation has caused you hurt as well. Um, I'm also feeling, inter interestingly enough, I'm just realizing how many major arcana we have here. So we have the tower, death card, the fool, the wheel of fortune, the moon, and the hierophant. Excuse me, I'm just going to wipe my nose quickly. Um, all of these cards to me indicate uh, divine intervention, especially that wheel of fortune. You two, everything has happened as it should. Um, I know you don't need me to tell you that, but you are never alone in this connection. You're always being guided. There was a lot that had to happen in order for a, a union here. And I think that even if you tell yourself that you want someone new, I think that you're kind of fooling yourself there group too because your heart space is also very invested in this person and in the, in this connection. And it really feels like it's either them or no one with this Hierophant card reversed. It's like this really strong feeling of wanting to be close to each other and feeling very possessive of each other. Um, and you've had to almost lie to yourself and say that you don't want them in order for you to deal with the fact that you can't have them right now. Um, but they they really, there's so much love and emotion here for you. So I'm going to get some charms. It's charms for group two, please, spirit. And what is next in love for group two? Oh. Come on. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's what I'm going to call it because... Those charms are very hesitant to come out, and you got almost completely different charms to group one, which is wonderful. I love it when that happens. Okay, so I'm going to address the aggressive charm in the room. This charm slid across the table, um, and it's really wanting to be um, emphasized as like the pivotal point of this reading. <laughs> so, um, your person's energy is very strong here. I'm not really speaking from spirit. They really want to get their two cents across. And the main purpose of this charm is clarity. Your person is craving a moment of clarity with you to tell you the truth and to also gain your perspective. They want to know what you want. They want to connect with you. They really, connection here is really strong. Like they just really want to connect with you physically. Um, but clarity, 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 clarity with this charm. They're really craving clarity and they want to tell you the truth is what I keep hearing and feeling. Um, peace charm came out. So above all, um, this connection is moving into a moment of peace. Your person is craving peace. Um, that's probably why they didn't act sooner, honestly. There was fear of instigating a war, so to speak, um, creating conflict and disturbing the peace, but they've decided it doesn't matter. They just want peace with you. This connection is moving into a, a state of peace. Um, we have the tethered and stuck charm. This is my stuck charm. It's just the pen that is usually used in sewing, um, but it's a really strong feeling of um, feeling stuck on someone, feeling really, really <sighs> obsessed, if I'm honest, like this person, the jealousy charm didn't come out, but it just feels like they think about you when they wake up, they think about you before they go to sleep, they dream about you, their mind drifts to you, every song is about you. It's just a really, um, a really, yeah, strong feeling, a really, really strong feeling a really strong energy and there's a lot of guilt here because of any pain they have caused you. Um, this was actually reversed as well. So another message that I'm getting is that they're trying to unstuck themselves. Um, they're trying to get themselves out of a situation and this landed beneath that death card, the tower card and the nine of wands. So they are currently trying to get out of a situation. They're trying to unstuck themselves. Um, and there's something there that is limiting communication with the communication card in the middle. You may have noticed either this person has completely withdrawn or um, you can expect them to explain this to you anyway. They, they want to tell you why this happened and how this happened. And they're forming a plan as well with this quill is what I'm feeling. I don't usually pick up on this energy, but it's kind of reminding me of the strategy card in my energy oracle deck. 
um, and there's a quill on that and it's just like this person is unstucking themselves from this situation. I don't even know if unstucking is a word, but anyway, they're unstucking themselves from this situation in order to strategize um, or they're also strategizing how to move towards you, how to get peace, how to get clarity, um, how to get what their heart desires. And their heart desires you, if I'm honest, with this precious charm. You are so very precious and special to them. And I'm not going to lie, I know that they've completely overrun this re this reading with their own messages, but it feels like you have a special place in your heart for this person as well. And they feel so foolish. I'm not going to lie. I thought this was you fearing moving towards them for fear of being a fool. And maybe that's true. But Spirit indicated at the beginning of the reading that the two of you are mirroring each other. Um, but your person just feels like the biggest fool because they're there all this whole time. Their cup was with you. Their cup was as filled with your essence and no one else's. And it's like, oh my God, I needed death to tell me that. I needed death to show me that I was investing my energy into a lump of coal. And I'm so sorry if that was a person. I don't like to make anyone feel less than, but it took that moment for your person to realize what they truly wanted. With the moon card here, um, it does feel like a moment of expression is coming. The ability to take excuse me, to tell each other how you truly feel. Um, but this moment can't be instigated without a setting at first because it feels like the divine needs to intervene here as they have been <laughs> with all these major arcana. It's been happening. This intervention has been here. Um, but the intervention is going to allow you a setting of carefree um, moments of community. I just feel like it's a very... Um, communal sort of setting if that makes sense like it's not intimate it's not the setting that you would have you would have dreamt about like being alone together and having that moment of passion it's going to be a situation that involves other people it could be like a party or it's just like a group setting where others are involved and it's a moment to just have fun with this charm this charm indicates dancing it indicates like going out or like a house party of some sorts um, it just indicates like a, a carefree, playful three of cups energy where you can just have fun and not worry about the serious things. In that moment, though, there is going to be or in that setting, should I say, there is going to be a moment where this moon, all these illusions, these secrets, there's a connection and expression. And it's going to be a moment to get to the core of these emotions and to get to the core of these illusions and to fully express the truth. But the core message here with this clarity charm, it was actually that way, unlike the other one that was so aggressively threw itself across the room. Um, the core message here with that charm and with the Wheel of Fortune reverse is that this is out of your control. This is divine intervention and it will happen when it is intended to happen. It is very important that you continue focusing on yourself here and continuing to try to raise your vibration to attract. Um, it's just through law of attraction here. If you want an honest, balanced love, you've got to hire your, um, what's the word, like raise your energy to be at that level in order to attract it. Spirit saying it's very important that you continue putting those those energies out into the universe. It's not um, something you can control at this stage, this, this moment of expression. Now we also have the confusion charm here next to the Six of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles. So it kind of emphasizes the fact that in the past your person was very confused over this connection and what it meant and you know, they were really strong feelings, but they didn't understand them. And they were concerned, like, what if this isn't the one that's a lot of risks to take for someone who probably isn't going to be in my life for very long. And it's like, wow, no, I was very wrong. And they kind of realize now that their 10 of pentacles are with you and you're the only one they can picture. Um, and it's a really, really, at first it was a scary feeling with this charm here. This is a binding charm, very similar to that pin. It indicates a feeling of obsession at times, but it also just makes you feel as though no matter what you do, you're tethered and bound to this person. Um, and at first that was really scary for your person. <coughs> Excuse me. That was very, very scary. It was a moment of, wow, this person could ruin me if they wanted to. That's how invested I am in them. That's how much they mean to me. 
um, it was very scary. And then eventually they became more, um, lo- not lustful, maybe that was the stage two, but the longing kicked in and it wasn't about the physical temptation anymore. It was about their heart space, their emotional space. And then it was about their soul. Their soul began to crave you. And that's when they realized that there was more to this than they first um, expected or allowed themselves to believe there was way more to this connection. And we also have the most precious charm I own. So this is just confirmation that your person sees your value and you are the most valuable, precious person on this earth in their eyes. You're the only one. This indicates a desire to invest a lot of time and energy into you as well. And I do firmly believe that they want to give you something. They want to make up for something with you as well. So I'm going to get some destiny cards and intuitive cards as well. What is next in love for group two, please, spirit? What is next in love for group two? Spirit seems to be really pushing this person. Well, this person has completely overtaken this reading. <laughs> group two, please, spirit. What is next in love for group two, according to the destiny cards? We have flexibility. Interesting. So spirit is indicating that you should stay open. Um, <laughs> stay open here, okay? Just leave, raise your vibration and leave your expectations open is what I'm feeling. Integrity, don't lower your integrity. Don't feel that you need to lower your standards or your, I'm really feeling vibrations here. Don't lower your vibrations, okay? Continue doing what you're doing. Um, continue living with that firm belief that you deserve more, um, and I do strongly feel that your person is going to match these these vibrations and this energy, but it's more about remaining open and really not placing specific expectations here. Um, continue working with your values and really fulfilling. Um, for some reason, honesty here is very important to you and this connection. There's going to be a moment of honesty. And with this integrity card, it feels like you both need to be in a very firm position in order to help spirit instigate that moment of honesty. Um, yeah, because I do feel like there's going to be an opportunity to express here, but the two of you need to be ready for that moment in order to move. I don't know why integrity is very important here. There could be other people still involved that could get hurt. So I just feel like you both need to really be working on your vibrations. We have detail here detail I do feel like there are details missing um I don't think there was the opportunity to go through the past together and to do the whole he said she said business but it does feel like details are missing and there's so much that's been happening um in the background here I'm not gonna lie group two you may be feeling like you're going nowhere you may be feeling like you've hit a dead end like there's nothing happening but spirits indicating that a lot is happening in the background with that moon card and the death and the tower and literally everything here the fool that was reversed there's a lot of details missing that you don't know yet and these things are going to come to light in divine timing i know divine timing can be frustrating <laughs> I really know, but um, it is going to happen. It is. Okay, so with tenderness here, um, I feel like, I don't know, why does it feel like I'm getting like a toss-up here between the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Cups. It's like one minute your heart is open and you're ready to receive and this person is really linked in with your heart space and the next moment it's like logic kicks in and you're like, no, I can't do that, I can't do that. Spirit is indicating with this card that it is safe for you to love, it is safe for you to leave a, sp a space in your heart open for this person um, and it, it's not about becoming obsessive again, I know I've used that word a lot in this group, but it's just about keeping a space um, a tenderness open for this person. Um, it feels like they need to feel safe in order to open up to you because they're expecting backlash. They're expecting the Queen of Swords to behead them before they've had the chance to tell you their truth. And we have pleasure, an emotional connection, um, reconnection, should I say, <laughs> but um, pleasure. So I'm feeling like you need to focus on the simple things in life as well, just to help you get through this 
period because so much is happening around you and it can be very easy to feel frustrated and to feel like you're going nowhere and to feel like you haven't made any progress at all. So spirit is sort of indicating to treat yourself along the way, to recognize how far you've come and to allow yourself to enjoy the simple pleasures in life as well, to take moments to recognize um, what you enjoy doing as well, just to really stay present and to realize how far you've come without getting too nostalgic. I know this is a lot of rules, but just um, enjoy the simple pleasures in life with this card. Yeah, we also got fun. So don't forget to have fun, group two. Enjoy the simple pleasures in life and have fun. This is going to bring you more harmony in your general life, let alone your love life as well. And we have gentleness at the bottom there. So this person is really requiring a gentle space to come towards you. They're expecting to be beheaded. I'm going to get some intuitive cards from this deck as well. Group two, Spirit, what is next in love? Ghost, yeah, this is somebody who you haven't seen in a very long time. This is somebody who haunts you, is what I feel. Someone who just can't, you can't stop thinking about. We have Claw, this is someone who is trying to fight for you. Someone who's really had to fight to be with you, with that Claw card. Um, there's, they're expecting to fight for you as well. <laughs> Um, to fight their way back into your life is what I feel. We have door. So when one door closes, another door opens. Don't feel like you're stuck. You have so many. Well, in this particular card, you have one option, but just know that you aren't stuck, okay? A door will be opening for you very soon, group two. What else for group two, spirit? We have the moon again. And look how many cards are in this deck. We have the moon again. Secrets needing to come to the surface, waiting for that divine intervention, waiting for that fairy to come with her magic wand and to make it all possible. We have Band-Aid as well. Someone really wants to fix something. Someone wants to heal a pain from the past. I don't know why I put that back. And I'm going to get bottom deck energy for you. Um, tongue. Ooh, ooh, I'm sorry. I just felt that in a sexual way. But um, I do feel like this is speech related. It's about telling the truth it's about communication it's about articulating um and getting clarity getting that moment they're really waiting for the right time waiting 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 so can i get messages for group two please from their person what would group two's person say to group two if they could say anything to them right now we have reach out wow this is the ace of swords communication connection wanting to that clarity expression a new beginning. They want the opportunity to tell you. They're waiting for the opportunity to reach out. They're probably planning it as well with that strategy charm, remember? I think they're planning. What would group two say? What would group two's person say to them if they could say anything? I need time for me. So they want to let you know that they haven't been doing nothing, okay? And they also haven't been doing secretive things. Um, I do feel like this person has slipped off your radar. Um, there's e definitely like no communication or very little communication at all. They have been taking time to strategize, but also to heal and to figure out what the hell is happening in their life as well. They've had some really intense moments and they've needed time to, to recover. They've also just needed time to ground themselves and to put themselves into a little cocoon. Um, fours can come at times when we're feeling very vulnerable and it can offer us stability and comfort that we really need. And I really feel like this person is a vulnerable soul. And they really underwent some really strict, or not strict, but um, painful things recently that challenged them. And they needed that moment to just go into their cocoon and recover. They're also saying the Six of Cups, I'm absolutely in love with you. And that's something they want to tell you slowly. They're not going to do it straight away because they're worried that you're going to cut their head off. But they want to show you. They really have so much emotion for you, group two. They're absolutely in love with you. What else would they say? One more card, please. We have Let Me Have You. The Seven of um, Wands, yes, Seven of Wands. So this is someone who is fighting for you. They want to fight for your attention. They want to fight. Um, they want to express their passion towards you. They want to show you that they're interested in you. This is someone who is fighting their way back into your life. They're overcoming a lot of fear right now. The Seven of Wands can indicate someone who is battling their own fears, their own anxiety. 
Um, it just feels like they have a lot of obstacles that they have to overcome, but they are willing and determined to overcome them. We also have the Seven of Cups that came out. Do you even see me that way? So they feel like you have a lot of options, group two. They fantasize about you a lot. They think about you a lot. They daydream about you a lot. They dream about you a lot. <laughs> You're always on their mind and they really want to connect with you and to show you that they're interested in you still. And they want to know if you're interested in them. Bottom deck energy is I'm too afraid to talk to you, which is reverse. So they're coming out of an eight of swords situation. They want to end the cycle of no communication and they want to move forward here. So I'm going to get some advice from spirit. Can we get some advice, please, spirit? What should group two do in this situation? What is the advice for them? Group two, please, spirit. What is the advice for them? Whoops. Group two, please. What is the advice for them? We have sadness and isolation in reverse. I just keep feeling and hearing it is safe for you to love. It is important that if you want to step forward into this, you need to heal whatever pain happened in the past. I'm really feeling like um, your vibration is essential here in order to instigate that opportune moment to connect. We have third eye chakra, confirmation to always trust your intuition primarily. The outcome is going to be different for each and every one of you. The situation is going to be different for each and every one of you. So always ensure that you're trusting your intuition and letting your third eye guide you through these tricky situations. And that is the same color as your stone as well. A lot of purple intuitive energy here with that amethyst. Group two spirit, what is coming what is coming is what I said. What is the advice? We have shine. So this is the sun card. Um, this is a moment of happiness. Again, I'm feeling that um, simplicity and fun card, you know, take time to enjoy the simple pleasures in life. Those really en ensure that you're finding a moment in every day to embrace that inner child and to have fun and to live the lighthearted energies because there is a lot of opportunity to feel stuck and stagnant here and to feel down and you don't deserve that you do deserve happiness spirit is encouraging you to find moments of happiness in your day we have a well-deserved reward in reverse this is the nine of pentacles this is indicating one very specific message to me is that you're not going to be single for very long i feel like some of you have made some incredible strides forward in your life and what has been missing is someone to share those achievements with and it's like, this is the well-deserved reward that you've been waiting for. Um, this is someone to come in and share those achievements with. I'm not going to lie as well. The Nine of Pentacles reverse could indicate that there is timing delays here. I just feel like the timing is completely out of both of your hands. I'm not going to lie. I'm sorry. I don't like to share those messages, but um, it does feel like this is divinely guided, divinely intervened. Um, a lot of divine timing here. We have moving on the eight of cups. So spirit is encouraging you to keep striving um, towards your happiness, whatever that means for you. It doesn't mean that you are running from your, your sadness. It is okay for you to have those moments when you're feeling down. Um, remember that surrendering is not a um, simple, straightforward process. It is a journey and it involves um, you coming back and having to re-surrender occasionally, having to reprocess those heavy feelings and remembering those heavy feelings in order to continue to move forward. So spirit is really encouraging you to process that sadness and to keep striving towards your happiness. Bottom deck energy, solar plexus chakra reverse. So things are happening, but I do feel like they're happening in the background for you. Last thing, I'm just going to quickly get some initials or papers for you. Group two spirit. This is a very long reading. Holy heck. We have N. Interesting. We have H, we have Z, any more initials? No, we just have messages. So not many initials, but we have a lot of messages. We have March, I am grateful for my soulmate. I also, um, March to me is indicative of Pisces. I'm really feeling the moon here, very strong moon energy. Um, it just feels like your intuition is very strongly linked to this connection. Trust your intuition. I'm going to read this one next. Not that it matters, but we have October. I wish I told you. I think that's a Libra month. Maybe I'm getting that mixed up. No, it is. It's Libra. I wish I told you. This person wants balance. They want justice. They want the opportunity to tell you the truth. 
And we also have January. I am grateful for you. Wow. This is Aquarius. This person thinks you're very unique. They think you're very special. They only see you, group two. You are the light of their life. You make them so happy. They're very grateful for you. And they want to show you how appreciative they are of you. We have if only. So very seven of cups energy. Very whimsical fantasy. Um, big, strong Neptune energy. This person's had a massive reality check. And they still, they just dream and fantasize about you, group two. Um, we have December. I am grateful for my hard work. So this could be Capricorn energy. Um, this is someone who is very much dedicated and committed to investing hard work into this. I'm feeling the seven of wands with this card. They're fighting to be back into your life. They're waiting for the right moment and they're fighting to be back. And we have February. I'm grateful for my love. Um, i trying to remember what's in between there. Is that Aquarius? February. Why can't I remember what February is? I'm grateful for my love. Oh, I can't remember what sign is linked to this, but their emotion is very much invested in you, group two. There's so much emotion here for you. So group two, I hope that resonated. That was a very long reading. Holy heck. Look after yourself wherever you are. It's a very exciting energy. Stay safe. Another video. Bye. Group three and welcome. If you chose this opalite crystal, and this is your reading. So just a warning, heads up, it's going to be a very long reading. Um, group one and group two were over 30 minutes. So we're hoping to get a lot of messages, as much information and as much clarity as possible. We're asking what is next in love for you, group three. And I'm going to be starting. Sorry, this just my eye just got very itchy. I have a little bit of like a hay fever situation going on so I hope I don't end up sneezing throughout this but <laughs> we'll see how we go so group three spirit what is next in love for group three please we'll start with tarot as always well not as always but just in this case group three spirit what is next in love for group three please honesty and clarity above everything what is next in love for group three Oh, that's weird. That's really weird. Five of the cups. Interesting. This card like flipped in front of my eyes, so I just felt like I needed to take it. Group three, what is next in love? We have the world, and we also have the four of pentacles, the full reversed, and the hierophant reversed. That's interesting energy, group three. Can I clarify the five of cups, please, spirit? Why is the five of cups in this reading? We have the four of cups reversed. And the High Priestess. Oh, damn. So the High Priestess comes with like a tape recorded message. Group three, always trust your intuition primarily. Take what resonates and don't let the rest take from you. Um, it's a little bit frustrating because it's almost like a roadblock as well. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's okay. I'm going to get as much information as I can for you. But spirit is really strongly indicating that you are the one who has all the answers here and to really trust your intuition and to use this as a guide but not a gospel if that makes sense can i clarify the world card please spirit why is the world card in this reading okay we have the five of swords holy a lot of fives here um we have the six of pentacles clarifying the four of pentacles why do we have the full and the high hierophant here reversed? Okay, which one? All of them. We have the Knight of Swords in the upright, and we have the Magician in the reversed, and Temperance in the reversed. Holy heck. Bottom deck energy is the Eight of Cups reversed. So, whew. Um, some of you are going back to something. Some of you are like, wait up, pump the brakes. This isn't right. Is that their energy or someone around them? Spirit saying it's different for each and every one of you. For some of you, there is someone in your, in your life who has made a grave mistake letting you go. And they have had a massive awareness lately. Um, and I say lately because it's very recent, like in the last couple of weeks, 
they've realized that wow actually this isn't this longing isn't going to go away um i don't know if you had a relationship with this person but yeah um for some of you it is someone completely new what is happening though is that it's like old energy is being cleared um illusions are being cleared things that aren't actually serving you have been cleared to allow an opportunity here for something new to begin um, the eight of cups reversed it just really feels like a lot of purging i'm not gonna lie and my i just had a hay fever attack but um yeah like my eyes are very itchy and so i don't know if you've had a lot of emotional moments lately um this is literally out of nowhere too my hay fever so it just feels like there's been a lot of um a lot of purging, a lot of build up to this moment here. Um, we start this reading with the Five of Cups, which isn't always a um, a most positive energy, if I'm honest, but it is an energy that we need to go through sometimes. The Fives to us, or to me anyway, instigate change. They instigate the opportunity to realize that, you know, maybe there's something else out there for me. Um, the Five of Cups upright is a strong indication here that it is safe for you to, to experience this loss, to allow yourself to cry if you have to, to allow yourself to feel down if you do. You know, nobody can tell you, has the right to tell you how and when to feel what you feel. But Spirit is strongly suggesting that there will come a time when you need to focus on what you have and not just what you've lost as well. So the, while the grieving period is healthy and it's natural, it is really important that you understand when the situation um, is calling for you to improve as well and to step out of that grief. And it's being clarified by the High Priestess upright. And the High Priestess's mantra is, I know or I am becoming. Um, so it isn't necessarily what you see, it's just trusting your intuition and letting your intuition guide you here. And the other card that is with this High Priestess is the Four of Cups reversed, which can indicate the feeling of a missed opportunity. Um, so it's almost like this cup hasn't been offered to you yet, and you're just waiting for it, and only you, you know when that's gonna happen. Um, more than anything, Spirit is just saying, trust yourself, you know, you do deserve more, you deserve happiness, and you deserve, um, what you deserve is coming to you, is the main message here, what you deserve is coming to you, and it's important that while that grief is healthy, um, you do remember that you deserve more, and to focus on what you do have still in your life at the moment as well. Now the world card here, the world card is the last card in the major arcana. So it always can indicate the culmination of something. It can sometimes indicate a celebration, um, but it is like an important moment of closure almost for you group three. It's like an opportunity to finally put a lid on something. Um, it, I mean, this is a love reading, so it could be a situation or like a person or some sort of connection, but it feels like this. there's a culminating event occurring in your life and it has something to do with um, a past situation that, um, or a past conversation that you had with someone that left you feeling very unsure of where you stood with them. This past situation had no resolution. Um, this person sort of just walked away instead of offering you um, certainty. They chose to leave a door open um, just in case they wanted to come back. And so Spirit is indicating that this situation is going to resolve itself. There will be like a resolution here with this world card, a culminating event is what I keep hearing. There's going to be a culminating event, an opportunity to put a lid on this. Um, but for some of you, it almost becomes a crossroads then because suddenly the world is your oyster. The crystal ball is in your hands. Are you going to allow this jar to stay open and keep feeding into it or are you going to put a lid on that and accept it for what it is and move on to something new so it feels like information is coming towards you and this culminating event offers you a crossroads then now we also have the four of pentacles um, in the middle here with the world so the four of pentacles to me says that someone is really struggling to let go of you and possibly vice versa um, this is something that may have only had the opportunity to 
have um, a little bit of investment, if that makes sense. Like I'm just really drawn to the fact that there are only four pentacles here. So this situation was never fully, it was like a fledgling situation. There was only the opportunity to invest a little bit into it, but it feels like you've really clung to these coins and also vice versa. I'm not going to lie. This person has clung to these coins and it's like they've waited for the opportunity to invest more. Um, it could be that you are having the opportunity to explore other options here. I'm not going to lie with this four all the way up to a six. It is a balanced energy. It is the opportunity to give as much as you take, to not be so hoarder-like, <laughs> to not be such a money miser and to actually have the opportunity to receive. But you have to give in order to receive, okay? And look at that. It's like a mirror. The numbers four and six it's like a mirror here so it's like a leveling up energy i'm not gonna lie where you felt like you had to cling to every shred of interaction that you've had in the past you're now being given the opportunity to have this equal give and take this balanced um, energy of of investing energy and investing time because really that is the most valuable thing here for you it feels like time you need more time with someone or someone needs more time with you um so interesting, group three. You, you, you're very um, general. I'm not going to lie. The other two had very specific narratives. But for you, it feels like it, I need to leave it more general. And that's what I'm feeling. Now we have the full of the full of cards. Oh, my God. We have the full card and the Hierophant reversed here. So interesting numbers as well. The five again. And we also have a zero. So we've had the last major arcana card in your spread, and now we have the first card, but it's reversed. So it feels odd. I'm not going to lie. It feels like what is missing here, excuse me, this hay fever is challenging my <laughs> speech now. Um, what is missing here, group three, is the risk. There's like nobody wants to take the risk. Someone's struggling to take the risk. Um, Someone feels like a fool. Someone feels like they don't know what you want. Someone feels like you don't want commitment and that it would be foolish of them to assume that you do. I don't know why, but it just feels like they're going to try anyway because we have the Knight of Swords below these cards. I'll show you those three cards next. Um, it feels like they're going to try anyway, but they need to be sure. They're going to test the waters first. They don't know what you want. Do you want commitment? They don't know a lot about you, actually. They feel like they, they need to know more with that Hierophant card. They need to get advice on what to do here. How do I approach this person? What do they want? But they almost don't want to ask other people. They just want to know from you. Because the Hierophant card can usually talk about seeking advice, but for it to be reversed, it's like they really don't know. And they feel like it's such a big risk that they could take. They don't know enough and they feel like a fool but they're going to do it anyway because the cards below that are the Knight of Swords, impulsive action with the Magician reversed. I'm sick of waiting. <laughs> I'm sick of waiting is what I heard. Uh, well, I said it, but <laughs> that's the first thing I've heard when I saw that Magician reversed. And we also have Temperance here. So this person is struggling. Their self-control is really waning here, all right? This is someone who has been trying to manifest you into their lives. Whether you know them or not, you are everything that they've wanted and they feel like for whatever reason they've waited so long and they can't have you. With this magician card reversed, you're still off limits. Um, again, it's going to be different for each and every one of you. This could be someone you know, but I'm treating it as a new person because for some of you it is. It's just that this person comes into your life and they feel impulsive, but at the same time, there's this feeling that they can't act impulsively and they have to exercise self-control with that temperance. They have to be tempered with their mindful of their energies around you. Um, I feel like they're still going to do something very foolish um, that really tests you and just wanting to know what you want, whether you're interested in a commitment, whether you're interested in a relationship. What's missing here is, is, is you, really. This is them. They want to know what you want. 
um, with that magician reversed, they're feeling disempowered when they approach you, group three. They feel as though they haven't got all that they expected to. It's interesting because we have the magician and the high priestess here. They see you as a very powerful, intuitive person, and they know that their smoke and mirrors trick isn't going to work on you. So they kind of hang back. They don't put on the big display for you. They feel like it's not going to work. You're too intuitive. You're going to see straight through them. They need to come at you in a different way. And it feels very opportunistic. With this Knight of Swords, there's an impulse there. There's this hastiness there. It's almost like a now or never situation for them. They have to act. Otherwise, they're going to lose this opportunity. But they just don't really know what they're doing. Um, there's a lot of self-control throughout that situation. So <laughs> interesting energy, group three. Very interesting energy. I'm going to get some charms for you. So it's group three spirit. What is next in love for group three? Okay. Oh, my God. Why did the two loudest charms have to come out first? <laughs> oh, what is next in love for group three? Holy heck. I'm going to get a charm bowl, I think. Because it's just becoming a very risky, <laughs> a very risky hobby <laughs> to pulling charms. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that fell out for you, group three, was the coin of value. Now, this coin has two sides. One side indicates intrinsic value. Um, this feeling of self-worth and knowing a person's value based on their traits, their personality, their soul. And then there is the material value here. Um, I can't remember. Ult altruistic value. Is that the right word? I'm not sure. But it's this feeling at, at the moment um, of being someone is very much invested in how much they're worth. Like <laughs> they're putting value on material things they're both focused on material things I don't know why this is significant but it could be you it could be the person that you're attracting into your life but it just feels like um, this person is very focused on on material things and that is significant to your what is next in love for you apparently um, I don't know if with this world card that's a very heavy Saturn energy um, Saturn, well, Capricorn is also ruled by the planet Saturn. So with this feeling of being like materially linked, they could be an earth sign. They could be a Capricorn. They could have that in their charts. Um, I don't usually read into the signs too much unless I'm being guided to, but it just feels like there's this feeling of being materially focused. Um, and it may be that what helps pull you out of this Five of Cups situation where you're feeling like you're grieving something and it's really hard to be present, perhaps being more focused on your material world is a way out of that situation for you, is a way to pull yourself out of those heavy energies. Now, the other heavy charm that came out was the confusion charm. So your love life feels very confusing. I'm not going to lie, um, especially at the moment. I feel like you're not really sure where you're headed. Um, you do have this culminating thing here that offers you a crossroads. This culminating event with the world card is going to clarify this uncertainty and it's going to offer you the opportunity to extend. I just put those in the wrong position, I realized. Um, to extend your four of pentacles into your six here to allow this feeling of I don't want to lose you to be more of an equal give and take situation if that's what you want um, you're going to feel more able to express whatever um, desires you have in your relationship um, it's very it's very interesting energy group three I feel like that you're all in a very different boat but for whatever reason, you've all picked to this group. So I'm trying to keep it open so that it still has those messages for you. But um, it's like a journey of aligning your path with one very specific person. Um, now, the be beginning here, clarifying our Four of Cups and the High Priestess, we have the Precious Charm. So this is... This is a reminder from the universe, actually, reminding you that you are so very precious and that with that high priestess, you should always know 
your own worth before you attempt to let somebody else explain it to you. Um, that high priestess is really about knowing. You don't need to prove anything to anyone. You just know. Trust your intuition. Trust your intuition. We have the um, grounding charm here. Um, so for whatever reason, there's a strong pull for you, especially in the beginning here, group three, there's a strong pull for you to remain present in your situation. I feel like there's, with that five of cups energy, it's, it's going to be very easy for you to become trapped in nostalgia and for you to really feel trapped in, in this feeling of loss. Um, but spirit is really encouraging you to stay grounded um, especially because we have next to that the past charm. So something with your past is culminating for sure, group three. There's a culmination happening, a culminating event that has to do with your past, and it's important that you stay grounded. Um, I feel like the precious charm was over the five of swords there. Um, this is the most precious one. So obviously I have a few. We started with the earring, and now we've got this gem this most precious charm. So it's really bizarre because I don't know if this person, this person needs to clarify something with you. They need to tell you something. Um, and it has to do with almost like putting you on a pedestal. It has to do with their actions and the way that they acted towards you or an impression that they left you with. Um, it's a culminating event that involves it involves something that happened in the past, but it's just strange that the precious charm wanted to land on top of that five of swords. It's almost like what they did in the past was absolutely a reflection of how they view themselves, not how they view you. And it was like they put you on this pedestal, group three. Um, they put you on a pedestal out of reach. You were too precious for them. It's almost like you were, you were unattainable. You weren't something that they were allowed to have, which is really weird that that's coming through. Now, over here, I'm not going to lie, with the Fool there and the Hierophant there and the Knight of Swords and the Magician and the Temperance, we have the third party charm. So remember that was a very confusing energy over there. Um, that was the feeling of wanting to take a risk but fearing that they're going to be too foolish to, not knowing whether you're open for commitment. Someone was not sure about commitment here, and it could be because there is this third-party interference. Um, a third party doesn't always represent a relationship. It could mean that this person has responsibilities or commitments elsewhere. Um, perhaps the two of you have mutual friends, or this person could just have a very hectic lifestyle that they're very committed to their job or something like that. But there is a third-party interference. And for it to be positioned like this, this charm, Normally, if it's a very obvious third party, it's upright like this. Um, if it's not something that you're aware of, it may present like that. But for it to be sideways, it's almost like this is an obstacle they're trying to clear. Um, it's almost like this third party situation isn't actually an obstacle. And it's something that can be overcome, um, but it just needs to be overcome with clear communication. So it's, it's really different. It's like this isn't actually there anymore, which is weird. Um, it'll make sense to you when it happens, but this obstacle isn't actually, isn't real. It's a, it's a perception. It's something that someone has told themselves is an obstacle. Um, and for some reason, closure again. We have another charm that indicates closure, and that was over the magician reverse and temperance, self-control. I do feel like there's going to be a, this closure, this culminating event. Um, it's very odd, group three. Every single one of these groups has had this strong energy come through, and I, it does feel like for, for some of you it's not necessarily like a specific person. It's just this journey of, of gaining closure for you. That is what is next in love. It's this journey of, of feeling more um, aware of your, your situation. And for it to start with the high priestess, it's like you already know these things. They're just finally coming to light now, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to get some destiny cards. So group three spirit, what is next in love for group three? We have giving, that six of pentacles, the opportunity to give to you. I feel like you're receiving group three. Oh my God, my throat just closed. So 
Wow, um, talking way too much, clearly. But um, group three, it feels like you're receiving. Someone is intending on giving you information. Someone really wants to give time to you. Someone wants to come in and help you feel balanced again. They're really enthusiastic. Look at that enthusiasm. This is someone who really wants to know what you want. They're very enthusiastic to get to know you. Um, we have prudence, so that's making me feel like that temperance card again. Self-control. Someone who perhaps initially looks very reserved. Um, this is the feeling of, yeah, not wanting to not wanting to rock the boat at first. So you may get mixed energy from this person initially because of responsibility. Look at that. Prudence, responsibility, that third party perception, a perceived obstacle. It's just based on their subjective opinion though. It's not a real obstacle is what I'm feeling. Um, we have detail. So mm, yeah, you already know your intuition is spot on. But these, these things are going to start to come to light now and you're going to have the opportunity to understand um, things that were happening in the background, if that makes sense. Yeah, trust your intuition, really trust your intuition. And we have fun. So regardless, what is next in love is fun. You are going to have fun times. There's giving, there's an enthusiastic person um, who has some stuff to sort out with their own mental <laughs> things, but it's going to offer you a lot of fun. Bottom deck energy is pleasure for you in the destiny deck. So interesting. Um, I do feel, let's get some intuitive messages from the deck of characters as well. What is next in love for group three? Rainbow. So you will have this happy moment, okay? This is confirmation that you will get through that five of cups energy. Um, you are going to move towards brighter and happier days because that is what you deserve, group three. What is next in love for group three, Spirit? What is next in love for group three? We have Swamp. Interesting. Um, I'm also seeing ocean, but I'm going to shuffle that back in for now. Now, swamp to me is, I mean, this has come up before. It really feels like this person is letting other people's opinions um, sway their actions in the beginning. Um, this may be a past energy or this could just be the energy of the person when they initially come into your life because this is a what is next in love reading. So it feels like initially other people's opinions or just this perceived obstacle is, is, a, is a limiter in this connection. It's a limiter in them um, taking action towards you. The impulse is there. God knows there is every desire to move strongly towards you. But it's like there's fear of falling into the swamp and, and disappointing other people. They feel a responsibility towards other people um, initially. And it's, it's not real. Um, we have repairman. It's not real. They can overcome it. Um, this could be very specific. Maybe this is their profession, but <laughs> where's repairman here? It's like you are going to get through it, okay? You can work through this. Um, there's actually nothing that really needs to be repaired unless this is somebody from your past coming in. But it's just this feeling of, again, you're going to get through it. You're going to overcome it. It's not a, it's a real um, challenge in, in the sense that it, everything happens for a reason, but it's not a real obstacle. It's a perceived obstacle and you are going to get through it. This repairman though, I just feel like, the magician here again with like tools you know you have every tool to get over this to get through this situation sorry not get over to get through the situation but it also feels like um this person doesn't feel that strong initially when they come into your life they're like well I can't use my tricks on on that person they're going to see straight through me my smoke and mirrors aren't going to work on them they're the high priestess they already know um, so they have to get creative there. They have to get really creative with how they overcome that obstacle. We have gold mine. Yeah, this person sees a lot of value in you. You're very precious. Um, and I feel like you've hit the jackpot here too. Like this is a significant connection and you are going to get through it. Um, I also feel like this is confirming like not to settle, especially because we started, I keep going back to that five of cups, but they always say the first card you pull is the strongest it just feels like don't settle for less, you know. The, the real treasure is out there. The real treasure is waiting for you. And the other card I'm going to share <laughs> is poop. Interesting. Oh, my gosh. I have to really dig deep for this um, intuitively. 
What am I feeling with this card? I just feel like don't settle for less. Literally, this is following on from the magician energy and that gold mine. Don't, you know, just cut through the crap. This person is, they're going to see that you are someone who, who deserves um, a lot more than what you've had in the past. And I feel like you're leaving this energy behind as well. It's confirmation that like... <laughs> Oh, I just can't believe I'm out here trying to spiritually <laughs> describe poop <laughs> intuitively. That's hilarious. Um, anyway, it really feels like you're not going to settle for less. Like this is a moment to, you know, buckle up or get out. Like basically I'm not, I'm not going to take crap anymore. <laughs> Bottom deck energy is love potion. Wow. Wow. Someone is, has hit, been hit by Cupid's arrow. Um, yeah, interesting. So I'm going to get messages from the person that is coming into your life. Group three's person, spirit, that magician energy. What would they say to group three if they could say energy, any anything, sorry. Group three, that poop card has just completely obliterated my, I mean, I was barely here with that hay fever. That was a challenge enough. <laughs> All right, so group three, spirit. What would that magician energy person say to group three if they could say anything? We have let me have you. Oh, my gosh. This is very similar to the second group, I think. Um, let me have you. The seven of wands. Reach out. And we also have do you even see me that way? The seven of cups. You know what I heard when I touched that let me have you card? That's the seven of wands. I heard the limit does not exist. This person's perception of boundaries isn't real. They need to overcome that. And I feel like it's about overcoming this fear, this fear of what other people think, this fear of hurting people that isn't real. Um, this third party situation is a perceived blockage. It isn't real. Um, there's an opportunity here to connect with this reach out card. This is actually the Ace of Swords. Um, I, I leave it open. I just put the numbers and I really feel it as, I, as I'm as i reading it. But that does feel like the Ace of Swords. I'm also feeling Ace of Wands. A lot of passion in this um, group. Um, but it is an opportunity to connect. And it feels like with that Magician card, there's a lot of concern over looking like a fool. Um, but it's important that, you know, expression occurs otherwise it's just going to continue to be a fantasy with the seven of cups do you even see me that way it's really important that um this situation allows for the two of you to express how you feel um i feel like you're almost too good to be true when this person finds you you're almost too good to be true is what they're, they're saying and they want to fight for you but it's like they don't actually need to because that obstacle isn't real very strange so group three's person what would they say spirit interesting we have words do hurt to remember that five of swords energy needing to offer a culminating event um, closure really i need more time the four of what are we getting here pentacles apparently i need more time oh i see i need more time with you the four of pentacles to the six of pentacles. I need more time with you. Balancing that give and take. Wow. And we have the ace of cups in a very simple form. This, I always say my aces are opportunities, not promises. But this person wants to promise you something. Let me tell you that. When they have the opportunity, they really want to make you feel special. Bottom deck energy is you are right. This is about the high priestess energy group three. Follow your intuition. Trust your intuition. Um, remember your songs are in the description box below. You have two songs. <laughs> group one stitched me up again. They gave me <laughs> the first song that came out for group one. It really left some questionable <laughs> um, statements in my head. So I had to come up with a second song for each and every one of you. Now, group three, the first card that's coming out for you as advice from spirit is nurture. This is the Empress card. This is really talking about fostering that love within yourself. It might be the opportunity to extend your nurturing energy towards someone else. 
Um, but it is really important that you exude self-love here with this Empress card. Really fill your own cup before you feel obligated to fill anybody else's. I do feel that there is an op opportunity here to um, creatively express yourself as well. I don't know why that's coming through. But um, this card often makes me think of like creativity, the opportunity to create something, creation in general. The Empress card is notoriously known as the Mother card as well in Major Arcana. So it just feels like this, there's a fertile new beginning coming towards you, Group 3. And it's really important that you really let your intuition guide you here and you allow your, your heart space to stay open. And the best way that you can do that is by healthily feeding that love into yourself. You know, it's not about selfish in a bad way. It's about, oh, look at this, change your focus. The Five of Cups reverse, focus on what you have, focus on being present. Allow yourself to grieve because that is natural, that is healthy. If you need to purge some energy, you need to purge some emotion. If you just need to cry, that's fine. But it is really important that you focus on what you do have as well and remember that you deserve better. I really feel like you shouldn't settle. You're going to hit a gold mine very soon, Group 3. Um, what else? What is next in love for group three? What is next in love for group three spirit? We have the full card again, this time reversed again. Oh my goodness. Someone really is worried about being foolish. Spirit is really indicating this need to trust. Trust yourself. Trust what you're feeling. Trust your intuition. And above all, trust in spirit and your guides because they have got your back on this one, group three. They really do release and master i just saw the death card and um also there's the devil card in here i will take them out but this is just a quick message this is an advice but this is this indication that there is someone who is quite um who is going to be very i don't like that this has come out in every single group but it, it has an energy that you know them already I'm not going to lie. There's someone around you who knows you already um, or is going to feel like they know you already. Um, regardless, though, as a general message, Group 3, this energy of releasing um, and the devil card is really about not allowing um, these feelings of not feeling good enough as well as it's, it's some sort of um, behavioral or some sort of mentality that was limiting a new beginning for you with this devil card. It's it's like you were self-sabotaging yourself, um, self-sabotaging your, your journey, your options, your opportunity for something to grow. Um, and it's really about breaking out of that distorted thinking and realizing that you deserve a new release, a new opportunity. And it is about releasing... Um, energy from your past there's a strong energy here of something in your past has been limiting you group three i don't know if it's a specific person it could be a mindset for a lot of you but something in your past was really limiting you here and not allowing you a new opportunity it definitely created an ending with this death card but it's like that ending was never able to resolve itself and it just kept lingering. And now you're having the opportunity um, to really release it and let it go. Don't let it hold you back anymore. What else? Spirit? Oh my God, really? <laughs> you guys are going to be a long group. We have Reach Out, the Three of Wands. It's this feeling of collaborated. Collaborated effort is what I'm feeling. Collaboration. This is the Three of Pentacles. Somebody wants to work with you. Somebody really wants to um, give you something. Somebody wants to offer you something. I just saw that poop card again. Don't let them offer you that. You know, we're only here for the gold mine. <laughs> Somebody really wants to work with you. I just think that it's about changing perceptions here. Simply love and believe and succeed. Both of these are sixes. The Six of Cups and the Six of Air, the Six of Swords. Oh no, my bad. That is the Six of Wands, sorry. So it's this energetic and um, passionate, emotional desire for more that is guiding your new beginning in love. And it feels like um, it's it's you're wanting a simple, yes, you're wanting a simple love, but it feels like you're going to have to, I don't know why, but it feels like you're going to have to make a decision here of moving forward or choosing to fix something first. Oh, I don't know. I might be just pulling at straws here, but it feels like with that six of wands reversed, 
um, something needs, and I'm seeing that repair man underneath it too, something needs to be fixed before it can succeed. And it has to do with a moment of expression and, and something coming back from your past with that six of, six of cups reversed. And then we also have the sun card here, shine, which is all a very beautiful, happy card, but it involves optimism. It involves um, staying in a high vibration, embracing bliss, embracing happiness, finding those moments to be childish and, and have fun and just embracing your inner child. And the other card is the five of wands. So overcoming other people's opinions, really um, challenging times ahead, but you can get through it. Fives are uh, issues that we are offered in order to instigate change, but we are destined to overcome them. They are never anything that is too much for us. And it feels like the biggest obstacle here is other people's opinions or this perception of what other people will think with this five of wands. It's a difference of opinions. The obstacle isn't real. You can overcome it. So group three, that is what I'm seeing for you. I hope that resonated. There were some really random messages in your group and it was like straight in and straight out. I honestly don't know how to summarize your reading because <laughs> it was a very, um, very spiritual energy. And I do hope that it offered you information in order to move forward, make some informed decisions. Um, look after yourself wherever you are. I'm really called to just show you this card one more time, the High Priestess. You know, this card, the mantra is I know and I am becoming. So it's just this feeling of trust your intuition on this one. Let that guide you in order to create this new powerful beginning and this culminating event. Um, look after yourself, group three, and I'll connect with you in another video. Bye. Hey, group three. Thank you so much for being patient and actually staying to watch this part of your reading. I just got to the editing stage and I realized I haven't given you any initials or um, key messages at the end of your reading as well from my um, gratitude box. So I do want to share that with you. I feel like it's only fair. I was literally about to export the video and then I thought, no, I need to add this in. So thank you so much if you stayed to watch this. And I apologize that the filming is unconventional. I'm literally filming this um, in the room that I'm editing the video in. So we'll see how we go. But these are your initials and gratitude papers, Spirit, for group three, please. Any additional messages or initials? All right. Oh, you got a few. Oh, goodness, this is going to be a very long video. All right, so we've got V here for your first initial. And this is actually an M for you, group three. We've also got a G. We also have a W, that could be two M's. This person might have double initials in their name. We have a H or an H, however you say it. We also have an A, we have an I. Oh, I don't know why, I just heard I'm sorry. We have an X as well, um, which could be a part of their name or it could be that this person, you already share history with them. Now we have I wish as your first message. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. I'm feeling don't settle. I don't know why, but it, it feels like a, that culminating event is quite significant for you. You've been waiting for it. We have September. I am grateful for my wisdom. Interesting. This is Virgo energy too. This is learning. This is having a moment to appreciate how far you've come. Being introspective. We have July. I'm grateful for intimacy. Oh, Cancer. Okay. Um, this is giving me <laughs> a feeling as though you're going to have an intimate moment with someone. An intimate moment of expression, expression with someone. There's that Kiwi accent sneaking back in. Um, we have February. I'm grateful for my love. Interesting. So you are going to have an emotional time. We started with that five of cups. Remember group three. So it's going to be an, a journey. What's next in love for you is there's going to be that culminating event that can offer you a crossroads situation. It's up to you which direction you choose. But that is your final messages and initials. Thank you so much group three. Once again, stay safe, look after yourself and I'll connect with you in another video. Bye.